When we talk about the Mauryan Empire and especially about the Mauryan Emperor Ashok, it is the Mauryan pillars that come to our mind. These Mauryan pillars are enormous. And if we look at their weight, they weigh more than 40 tons and their height is more than 40 feet. So considering the great size of these Mauryan pillars, the question of how these Mauryan pillars were erected becomes quite fascinating. And in this video, we will talk about the different methods which the Mauryan engineers used to erect these pillars. But before talking about the methods of how these pillars were erected, I think it is important to discuss what makes these Mauryan pillar unique. Now what we see is that the Mauryan pillar is quite different from the weight bearing pillars. So weight bearing pillars generally are part of an structure. But if you look at the Mauryan case, the Mauryan pillars are freestanding structures. Another interesting point that differentiate these two kinds of pillar is that the Mauryan pillar is made up of a monolithic stone. Whereas if you look at weight bearing pillars, we find that weight bearing pillars are made up of segments of stone. So in that case, there is this clear difference between the Mauryan pillar and the weight bearing pillar. Another interesting thing about the Mauryan pillar is that some scholars argue that the Mauryan pillars had some religious significance. Now, the fact or this tradition of associating some religious significance to freestanding pillars in India did not begin during the Mauryan period. It was an older tradition and in the early case it was wood that was used for the construction of these pillars. But in the Mauryan case we find that there is a transition from using wood to stone. So the Mauryans were the first who used stone for constructing pillars. The initial stages of erecting these pillars were not different from how the pillars were erected before the Mauryan period. So basically what the Mauryan engineers did was that they adopted the same technique which was used to erect wooden pillars. So in the, this technique what happens is that a hole was dug and after dugging this hole the pillar was then placed in this hole and finally the hole was then filled. Now on the surface a kind of brick platform is also constructed. So this provided some kind of stability to the pillar. Now this method worked really well for wood. But in the case of stone pillars that weighed more than 40 tons, this method created some serious problem. And the most important problem was that because of the enormous weight of these stone pillars, these pillars started to sink in the ground. And that is what we see in the case of Vaishali pillar. So if you look at the Vaishali pillar, you will see that the size of the pillar, particularly its height, is quite short compared to other Mauryan pillars. And the reason behind this short height is that this pillar has sunk more than 14 feet into the ground. So that is why this pillar looks quite short. And we can also say is that the original height of this pillar was more than 14 feet of its current height. So this was one problem. The second problem with this method was that because there was no such foundation, the pillar was also prone to disbalance. So these two problems were there with this method. Now these problems were also noticed by the Mauryan engineers. And to solve this problem, they created a new method which involved a foundational stone slab. So in this method, what happened was that a hole was dug and on the bottom of the ground, a stone slab was placed. And on this stone slab, finally, a stone pillar was placed and the hole was filled. So because of the placement of stone slab, we find that the problem of sinkage was solved. The size of these stone slab was also quite large. To give you an example, the stone slab that was found from Lauria Nandangad had the size of 7 feet by 7 feet and it was 10 inches thick. So this was the size of the foundational stone. So the problem of this pillar sinkage 
was solved using this method. Now, this method could work easily when a soil is firm and the pillar weighs around 50 ton. So what we see is that in most cases, this technique worked really well. But in cases where the soil is not firm, this technique also failed. And that is what we see in the case of Rampurva pillar. It was in 1877 that this pillar was discovered. It had fallen to the ground. And the reason behind this fall was the soil of Rampurva. The archaeologists who were working on the excavation of the pillar described the subsoil as quicksand with clay. Now this is the worst kind of soil which you can think of if you want to erect a pillar. The quicksand will create a disbalanced surface for the stone slab and if there is a strong wind, the pillar will get disbalance which would lead to the tipping of the stone slab and finally we find that the stone pillar would fall to the ground. Now this is what seems to have happened to the Rampurva pillar itself. So to recreate how this pillar fell, it appears that soon after the placement of this pillar, possibly within a century, there was a flood-like condition. So because of this flood-like condition, it made the subsoil lose whatever firmness it earlier had. And up along with this flood-like situation, we find that there was possibly some strong winds as well. So because of the strong winds, the balance of the pillar began to shift a little. And since the soil was also loose, we find that the foundational stone also began to tip. So because of the tilting of the foundational stone and also the tilting of the pillar, the pillar lost its balance and it fell to the ground. So this was the primary reason why we find that the pillar of Rampurva fell. Now another minor reason behind this fall was the fact that the balance of these Mauryan pillars was not that great. Now this disbalancing tendency of the Mauryan pillars is aggravated because of the capitals that were placed on them. So according to most scholars who have worked on these capitals, they argue that the Mauryan capitals were not designed keeping in mind the distribution of the weight. So in most cases, the weight of these capital is above the shaft. And because of this, we find that there was this tendency or the danger of the modern pillars tilting a little. But because of the firmness of the soil, this danger was not present everywhere. But in the case of Rampurva, because of its subsoil and the weather condition, this danger aggravated and finally it led to the fall of the Rampurva pillar. If you want to look at how effective this method of foundational stone was, you can see the Sarnath pillar. So the Sarnath pillar, we find that it is not complete, it has broken, but you will find that the shaft particularly at the bottom is still intact. Only the above portion has fallen. So in that case, we can see how effective this new method was, keeping in mind the firmness of the subsoil. So if the subsoil was firm, this method worked really well. But as we have seen in the case of Rampurva, that was not the case. Now these two methods of erecting pillars can also tell us about the date of these pillars. So the pillars where there is no foundational stones were placed earlier, whereas the pillars where there is a foundational stones were constructed at a later date. Now what we find is that out of the nine pillars that were studied, we find that five had stone slabs. So we can assume that these pipes were constructed at a later stage. Now what we also see is that this new technique of placing the foundational stone at the bottom was later adopted everywhere in the Indian subcontinent. So the most famous case of this technique being used is the Heliodorus pillar at Vidisha. Vidisha is close to Bhopal. So in this pillar we find that a foundational stone slab is placed at 
at the bottom of the pillar. Now coming back to the Mauryan pillars and their capitals, there is this debate among historians about the origin of Indian architecture. So we have already discussed that how in the Mauryan period there is this transition from wood to stone. So scholars argue the reasoning behind this transition. So if you want to learn about this debate, please watch this video. Thank you for watching.